the antidote. 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 You're listening to the antidote with Dave Hawkins. With Christian music that doesn't suck.
This is The Antidote with Dave Hawkins. I have no way of describing the sound of ornate and carved from Hunter Dumped Us here. I don't know if it would be better to call their music unique or simply odd, but realistically, it seems to be a blend of the two. But whatever kind of label you want to put on it, it's all enjoyable. And because of that, I decided to track down the band's frontman, Gabe Reasoner, for a talk about the reasoning behind the music of Hunter Dumped Us here and why their songs are so thoughtful and interesting. The Antidote is sitting down with Gabe Reasoner of Hunter Dumped Us here for a talk. Thanks for coming on, Gabe. Absolutely. I'm super happy to be doing this. This is awesome. Hunter Dumped Us here began with just you, Gabe. So how did you make the decision to change it into a full band? Yeah, so I started out doing it um, just me, like you said, because at the time there was no one around me um, that I really felt compelled to make music with. Uh, I was in a hardcore band that broke up and people were moving out of state, relocating, doing different things with their life. And I was like, you know what, I just want to do something by myself um, because I have plenty of musician friends, but they were all doing things and they were, you know, successful in what they were doing. So I just decided that it would be easier at first to create my own material and perform it just by myself as best I could. Um, And then as time went on, I just kind of started to realize there were certain people around me um, that would be a great fit. And it actually started um, my guitar player, Preston. I was doing a coffee shop show and I was getting tired of just sitting down at a keyboard for like three hours and occasionally playing guitar and and it just felt so bare um you know because people would come and they'd sit the entire time because they were friends with me some people would just come and chill and drink coffee and but people were coming and just listening to just me and a piano for three hours and i was like i need to mix this up Uh, so i asked one of my friends preston to do some guitar for me and as we were practicing for the set i just had this feeling of you know what i need to do this with this guy like this is something i need to bring him on full time and right around the same time a good friend of mine was in a band and it ended so i asked him to come on and do drums for me And then everything just kind of fell into place from there. We started doing every single show like that. Uh, I really loved the vibe. We started writing together. Like all the guys in the band are amazing musicians. Um, They've got a very, very unique style of writing and playing. And so it it really clicked. Um, and, And then to top it off, one of my friends that I was in the hardcore band with who had moved away to Colorado, he ended up moving back. And uh, he called me one day and he's like, hey, can I come jam with you guys? I'm going to be moving back. And I was like, absolutely. And from the moment he practiced with us the first time, played that first bass line, um, I knew that we were a four piece. So that's basically how the band came to be a four piece from a solo project. You know, I was going to bring in this really lame joke asking about why Hunter was mad at you and why he dumped you in Cedar Rapids, (laughs) Iowa. But that's not actually the case anymore, because you mentioned to me just prior to this interview starting that you've moved to Minnesota. Yeah, that's correct. Um, Personally, I relocated up here um, in January of this year, right in the middle of the winter. Yeah, I've been loving it. I've been up here doing some solo stuff, kind of getting that kicked off. And then we've been doing a lot with Hunter Dumptus here um, and just trying to be very strategic and smart about our show planning. And then some of the other guys are looking to move up here uh, this year as well. And what's the difference between the scene in Cedar Rapids and in Minnesota? Yeah, so for Cedar Rapids, there are some very good people there um, that work hard to make it as good of a scene as it can be. Um, It's just, it can be very hit or miss in Iowa, just anywhere. And, you know, the music industry as a whole is hit or miss. Um, Being in a band is hit or miss as far as whether your shows are going to be great or terrible. But... In general, there's just more of a music culture and more of an indie culture and an indie uh, fan base. Kind of, you know, um, in in Minnesota, there's people that are interested, I would say, more so in in what we are doing um, than people in Iowa. Now, we have a great 
uh, devoted following of, you know, friends, family in Iowa, and um, we love them. And, and they all showed up for a music video shoot that we did in February and made us feel super loved, super at home. Um, it's not like it's a barren wasteland there, but we just wanted to, you know, kind of expand and uh, Minnesota geographically and just in terms of a place that I wanted to live uh, made the most sense. And then with the, you know, added bonus of there being a good indie uh, music culture up here, it just seemed like the best choice for us.
American listeners may know about a 401k, but that song was something different. 401 KKK from Hunter Dumped Us Here. Gabe gets into the band's style on the next part of our talk, followed by Cavendish from their I Understand release. They'd never consider Hunter Dumped Us Here to be just indie, because your music bounces around. You know, it carries styles from post-hardcore electronic through the indie rock, spoken word, and even emo. Now, I would have thought that by not having a certain style, it would make it tough to build any kind of a fan base. You know, it definitely, it's a challenge because we want to be unique and different, and we never want to be just that band, um, you know, the the local band that you see on a show that opens up for, you know, some band that's their hero and they sound exactly like the band that's their <laughs> hero. Now, there's something to be said absolutely for having influences and in, incorporating that into your music, but uh, we want to think outside the box and do things differently. Uh, all of the band members have such varied influences and backgrounds that when we write together, it's definitely um, a challenge to make it unique and, and diverse. That part comes pretty naturally. What the, what's the challenging part of it is, is you know, still making it accessible. Um, so I, th- I definitely think that by not being a cookie-cutter band, um, especially by being a not-cookie-cutter band from the Midwest and Iowa especially, um, that we've maybe – had a slower growth than, you know, some other bands that are a very, very defined genre and they stay within that box. But I'm also glad for that because I wouldn't have wanted to sacrifice, you know, what we want to do and how we want to write um, just to grow quickly. Well, you know, Gabe, I really have to wonder if you weren't meant to actually be a novelist rather than a lyricist. You know, I would love to write a novel. <laughs> Most of the song lyrics from Hunter Dumped Us Here, these things are book length. I mean, why not sure. keep it short? <laughs> yeah, I think I just have an issue with talking too much. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I've always been a quiet, pretty shy person overall. Um, and I just had kind of, you know, a few uh, faithful friends growing up. And so I really was not an outgoing person still i'm really not an outgoing person but when it comes to expressing myself through music that is the one place when i never seem to run out of things to say and honestly there are songs that you would be surprised to know i actually cut down um for example cavendish um that i feel like that may be one of the ones you're thinking just because it's got the spoken word in there yeah, if you look at the lyrics, it's a pretty pretty hefty lyric uh, amount, I guess, for the song length. And uh, that's one of those songs I actually started out, it was longer, and I actually had to cut it down um, so that it wasn't like a seven-minute song. And we actually have issues with not writing long songs. Like, we'll, we'll really feel something, and I'll have lyrics for it, and then we'll stop and just be like, you know what, this is like eight minutes long, we need to cut out half of this. I suppose that's really because your songs are complete stories. I mean, that's yeah. not common in any area of music. It's especially hard for writing things concept-wise, which is what we do a lot. Uh, I understand the concept album. I usually at least have, even if it's not like a concept album as a whole, like we're writing for our second album right now, um, and I will write concept songs or two songs that are, you know, one concept. So it's, it can definitely be difficult to make sure that I, you know, tell the whole story while not writing a 15 minute song. Vanilla, he is loving what I'm saying. That man. 
waste their trays because we drank the water that splashed. I'm going to go for a complete change of pace here. Okay. The first release you had with a full band was the double-sided single, Sea Burial, Blue Treasure. How yes. different was that from your previous EPs? It was kind of a mix um, of a lot of different elements from both of the EPs that I did on my own. Because Rib Cage, my first EP, which was completely solo, um, is very electronically focused And as I started to perform and write more and more, I just naturally gravitated for a more organic singer-songwriter feel, uh, which was my second EP, which was key. Uh, So basically, when I had members come on, we incorporated the energy and the emotion from the full electronic release in, you know, some of the, the even, I don't know if you'd want to call it screamo or post-hardcore, but some of the, I guess harsher aspects we incorporated it um, into that more singer songwriter you know acoustic guitar electric guitar and drum setup Uh, because at the time we didn't have a bassist Uh, so sea burial blue treasure was done with no bass but it's technically you know it's like a full band sound Mm -hmm. so it was very interesting hey this is gabe reisner from hunter dumped us here and you have found the antidote
Ribcage. That came out in 2013. That got a really harsh review from HM Magazine. <laughs> I, I mean, you saw that? I did. And, you know, personally, I like it, but they described it as having glaring immaturity in the songwriting and that it was awkward. You know what confused me <laughs> about the review is it was like three and a half stars. I knew they were reviewing it and I saw the the star rating on it and I was like, okay, well, three and a half, you know, that's not, that's not bad. I mean, I'm excited to see what they say. And then like, if I had read the review before seeing the stars, um, I would have thought that it was like one and a half to two. So I thought personally, I just kind of thought that it was like hilarious. And at the same time felt a little bad that they like didn't enjoy it <laughs> and, and maybe didn't completely understand what I was going for. Um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting that the star rating was like not terrible, but not great. But then the review was like, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you handle negative comments like that? It was surprisingly not that much to me um, for that review. And, and the reason I say surprisingly is because I subscribed to HM Magazine when it was still in print when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I was reading interviews, reviews, music news, all of that stuff, you know, every single issue. Um, so I'm very familiar with HM and its its format. Having my work featured in HM was a huge deal to me. Um, also, it was a very odd release compared to kind of, you know, what they normally write on. So I was not completely surprised and I guess I'm surprised though that it didn't affect me more and, and, and bum me out more because like I said, I look up to HM a lot. Um, but for some reason I was just kind of like, okay, that sucks, but you know, not everybody's going to get it. I knew that rib cage was a weird release. Um, I knew that it was a very harsh release. And so, you know, not everybody's going to get that. And I, I understand. Well, I don't find this next track to be either harsh or weird. Uncaged from the Hunter Dumped Us Here release, Ribcage. Different than mine. 
Disappointed you, I always tried to do the best that I could do. Well, I can't see Hunter Dumptus here getting any negative reviews for last year's full length. I understand. I mean, really, it's excellent. Thank you so much. Were you aiming for it to have an ongoing theme in the album itself? Yeah, so we specifically, um, that idea was birthed as a concept uh, back in. 2014 right around when ribcage released um in march i just immediately was like um just i need to release this concept because i was having a lot of people in my scene cedar rapids um just come to me and and tell me you know your music means so much to me um just the emotion you put into it and kind of that raw honesty um this is what's going on in my life and i was just kind of overwhelmed by the amount of people that just have things happen to them and and they can't talk about it anywhere. Like they, they don't have a platform to talk about, you know, I overcame this, I conquered this. And so that's when the idea um, of having a concept album where each song is a different person's story kind of came to me. So then you're saying that the topics that you drew into, I understand were actually other people's stories and not your own. Some of them are my own. It's almost, you would even say, maybe a double concept. There's kind of two themes that run through the album, and one of those themes um, is telling these people's stories. And the other theme is that, you know, we all struggle. I think mental health is a very big topic in today's society, but one that people don't really talk about enough and don't recognize enough. And, And sometimes it's like, as an artist and someone that people, you know, maybe look up to or they connect to you through your music, it's like, um, you know, maybe you're looked at as someone who has it all together and, and has the answers and you're bringing these answers through music. And, and that's definitely not what I am. You know, I'm not someone that has the answers. I'm not someone that, uh, you know, gets off stage every time with a smile on my face. So it, it's got two themes. It's got some personal topics of just, you know, overcoming things and admitting my own faults. And then it's got the themes of telling these loved ones and uh, acquaintances stories as well. Even with the tough stories on, I understand the album does have a track with a positive ending dive into pools of transient light. Can you share about the song? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dive into pools of transient light is one of the most important songs from, I understand uh, to me because it is written for a friend of mine who had a very close family friend pass away from cancer. And unfortunately, in our society, in our world, most people have, or at least they know someone who has, you know, died because of cancer. So my friend uh, told me about this and told me that he'd like to have his story on the album. So it, essentially what it's about is um, someone that is dying from cancer, but it tries to put a positive spin on it, Um, you know, using faith, belief, 
you know, to kind of look at the the bright side of it and make it not such a scary, sad and depressing thing, but uh, to look at it as there's a gleam of hope. Yeah, because I was going to bring up about that, because it is interesting to see how much your music focuses on the rough moments of life. Yeah, mm-hmm. you mentioned about cancer, loss of relationships, death, mistakes, drug use. I mean, that list goes on and on. Right. Is it really important for you to share those topics? Yes, uh, it's very, very important for me because you know, I was raised in a, you know, a faith-filled church-going home. Um, and kind of surrounded by people when they would typically write songs or, or, you know, the songs that we would play at church. This is nothing against those songs specifically or the people that wrote them. Oh, I um, can dump but, on them. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of times it's so fake and it's so sugar-coated. And, and that's kind of almost how I started to write, like way back, you know, before I was ever in a band. Um, it was more of a just a, everything's okay this is what I believe type of vibe. And, you know, once you get older and you experience real life um, and you, you hear these people's stories and you kind of lose some of that uh, naive outlook, you know, at least I feel compelled to share about that and to take time to recognize that because that's real. and, And all I've ever wanted to do and all the bands ever wanted to do is be as real as possible and help as many people as possible through being real. Um, so if that means that we have to take a look at the hard topics, also portraying that there is hope and that there is love and there there is peace, um, then we'll definitely take a look at them. And, and that sen- seems to just be um, where we are, I guess, destined to be is tackling those hard topics and uh, spreading awareness as much as we can. What do you think of when there's nothing left? I hear you've taken a bad turn, wonder what's in your head. As long as I can remember, you have been our friend. If you lose this battle, I hope new life begins for you. Somewhere bigger, somewhere brighter, away from toils and cancer's grip. If there's dark between those two worlds, I wish you the most hastened trip. Can you feel the sickness washing over? Slowly all your colors turn grayer, colder. Full of inner vibrance, weak on the outside. Left there like a beacon. No one meant to find Be found Too many nights of treatment Will make you just a shell So promise me you'll do this always You better give that cancer hell Rise up unto the heavens Caress the bright stars with your heart
Well, with what you've just said, then it makes me wonder, are the songs aimed more at yourself or to the listener? I would say some of of both, and it definitely depends on um, the songs as well. Like, uh, for I Understand, Beautifully, Cavendish, and Sad, which are track 1, 2, and 13, um, those are all personal reflections And, you know, those songs were written more as a a statement for me of, you know, this is where I am at and I am telling these people's stories, um, but I am in no way, you know, this put together person that for some reason has this right to, uh, you know, write about these trials of other people from a a perspective of I've got it all together. So um, I'm going to write about you guys like, you know, it's very much a, hey, I'm there, too. I've been there. I'm still there some days. Um, and then we also very much, you know, write with people in mind and we want to stay relevant and write about topics that people care about and that people, you know, maybe need to hear about and just really writing for people that are going to maybe not hear about these things. Otherwise, you know, like maybe they've been raised, um, in a a home where they can only listen to the kind of music that I was talking about before, uh, or, or, you know, just uh, sugar-coated music in general. Maybe they just only get to, like, the, maybe they can listen to metal or something, but it has to be, like, for today. Um, you know, and if, if they can discover my band and, and maybe hear about, you know, some real issues, obviously, for today and bands like that, I don't condemn them in any way. But uh, if they can hear about some other different types of serious topics, then... I am absolutely okay with that. And and I would feel like my job is a little bit closer to being done if they do. I rue the day that I became ruined and I await the day when you will me your end I set the flame to all you've created and I can hear your name inside this destruction I rule the day that I became ruined and I await the day that you will me your end Flame to all you've created. I can hear your name inside this destruction. I rue the day that I became ruined, and I await the day when you will meet your end. I set the flame to all you've created. Inside this destruction You will burn, you will burn You will burn, you will burn You will never scare me again I will stand at the edge and I'll push you in You will burn, you will burn You will burn, you will burn You'll be blind to your final There's no question that was a harsh song covering a tough topic. 
The Worst Shepherd from Hunter Dumped Us here. You know, I love this band's music, and I'm really interested to see what else may come from Hunter Dumped Us here. If you're wanting to find more of their music, you can download the entire Hunter Dumped Us here discography on Bandcamp. Now, The Antidote doesn't have a discography, but we do have all 273 episodes available online. So if you've ever missed a broadcast, just head to iTunes and subscribe to The Antidote Radio Podcast. I do have something special lined up for our next episode. The Antidote will premiere the new hardcore release, No Future, from Conveyor. And Conveyor frontman, Danny Adams, joins me to chat about everything to do with their music and give us a really detailed look into their amazing new release. I've got the song Sad from Hunter Dumptus here queued up right after the last of our talk with Gabe Reisner. We'll see you again next week. Hunter Dumptus here has something really interesting on your Facebook page that says something like, when we leave this earth, we leave a statement behind. Everything we do in our lives affects what that statement becomes. Then what Absolutely. will that statement be for Hunter Dumptus here? Yeah. So, and and that touches on too, which a lot of people ask about um, the band name. That kind of touches on that. Um, it's basically this project was created for, you know, leaving a legacy of loving others and not judging others based on the life that they've lived and the mistakes they've made um, or their current choices. Even it's it's basically always been about loving people and trying to be as unconditional with that as possible. Um, so we don't want to be, uh, we came, we were this band, we played some shows, uh, we put out a couple albums, maybe we got signed, then we were done. Uh, we want to be, you know, we spread as much love and understanding, even maybe peace if we can, you know, through people's lives as possible with our music. And I want that to be the statement. I don't want to necessarily be something that people can listen to just passively. And if they do, that's great. Like if, if we're background music for a party cool but you know i would rather lean towards you know people listening to my music with intention and uh, being affected by the lyrics and and uh, coming away with something from it and it doesn't sound like you've really got a cap to your creativity because here you are the band is still touring i understand and you said you're already working on the next full length yeah, we've technically been working on the next full length since like before we released, I understand. <laughs> like like pretty much right away, um, as we were in the studio, we were just talking about ideas and and uh so we've got like half of a full length written right now and we've been working on some other things at the same time. So as uh two thousand seventeen draws to a close, we're gonna start hitting that writing process really hard, finish it up. And, uh, you know, look into recording and releasing a second album. Too cool. Absolutely. Put ourselves more in debt. <laughs> oh, it's true. If you're a musician, you've got to be in debt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you spend a lot of money so people can uh, not use your download card when you give it to them. <laughs> the Antidote has been here with Gabe Reisner from Hunter Dumptus here. Gabe, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm super happy to have done this. Thanks so much for reaching out. I used to think that I could mend things. I used to think that I had some strength. I was certain that I had the answers to make all the pain go away. I didn't understand the voices. Why do they sound beyond repair? Why don't they take solutions? Why don't they offer prayers? I felt like a guardian angel Watching over the ones I love Till I awoke with a broken conscience And realized what I was dreaming of I know what it means to suffer I have loved